So we'll call the meeting to order. First is to approve the agenda. Anything that needs to be amended? Nope, nothing I know of. Uh, I think the rest of the uh, that we move, if possible, um, well, I'd like to do the discussion about thermal while Nicole is here, if she's, if that works, or. Well, my question, I mean, yeah, that's fine. We're doing the bond informational tonight. I, I don't, that's up to Chris, but. Yeah, we try to fit it in around the 630. I'm just trying to. Yeah, I can't see what we're Yeah. Okay. Anybody have any issues with that? No. Okay, so just, we'll, we'll just leave the item where it's at, but we'll just, I just note it that, or someone remind me if I forget. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just, when Nicole's on, we can talk about that at the end. Yeah, because she's on. Sorry. Okay, we're going to pull it together. Okay. Second. Second. In all favor? Aye. Aye. And first on the agenda is Duke Boyce and King is here to do the presentation for Valley Sport Hall. Thanks for coming. Is this number one? All right. No, um, pretty quickly and then have time to ask questions. Um, so I, don't know, I just I looked at that. It's, a, it's supposed to say select word. It said it earlier, so I don't know what that means. But anyway, before you start, can everyone hear now that's on uh, online or all? Yeah, I think everybody's everybody can hear it. Can you hear it like? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the acoustics is bad. Oh, yeah. I didn't know if we had maybe that. Yep. Yeah. Sure. They, they Not yes. registered. Yeah. Okay. okay. If you can, since we're behind you, though, if you can be a little louder for us. Yep. Thanks. I will do my best. So uh, I want to go through the presentation outline. This is going to be really quick. Like I said, we'll talk to you a bit about the purpose, the goals, how to use the plan. Now, give a really high level uh, overview of each of the chapters because it's a big report. And then we'll talk about next steps, and uh, then we'll take questions. So, I mean, you folks all know about the project, but it's it's intended to be a community-driven planning process that makes Bethel more vibrant, accessible, and connected, and welcome for everyone. Um, so the project is, from the outset has been looking to create safer and more walkable streets in a connected village, accessible buildings, livable and attractive village, parks, public spaces, thriving economy um, and healthy clean river and better stormwater management. During the process, early in the process, the steering committee developed a series of goals. And this gets into this idea of uh, the village for all, accessibility for all, livability for all, connections for all, and clean water for all, which go back to that general purpose. Um, and these have been the guiding principles that we've used as we've gone through the process. So the purpose of this plan ultimately is uh, to be used as a guide, and it should be used to prioritize projects used as a basis to seek funding, state funding for plans and studies, budget for future projects, for test other ideas, because there's a lot of smaller ideas that can be tested really easily in this project, in this plan, um, build volunteer participation, which is really important as part of this plan, and to kind of maintain momentum. And throughout the process, we've asked a ton of questions, whether it's, uh, you know, asking people what shops and services they use or what would make walking and biking easier. We've asked a ton of questions and we studied a, a bunch of different things. This is, you know, looking at street design, um, looking at where um, Bethel needed ADA and accessibility improvements. And we had several partners as uh, worked with us in this project. Um, there was direct access who did an accessibility audit and a rural accessibility guide for Bethel. Um, Arnett Muldrow and Trip Muldrow came to town and talked to a bunch of business owners and did an economic um, an economic analysis. And uh, AARP also joined up and was able to do a walk on it for us as part of the project, which is excellent. And, you know, through that process, we got hundreds of big ide ideas, big and small, that came out of the process. And that was the what we learned report sort of pulled together 
not the ideas, but all of the things that we pulled, we, we learned through the beginning of the process, and then we jumped into big ideas. And that was where we had the focus areas which are related to the goals. So, you know, the big ideas around streets focus largely on making Bethel streets more accessible. Um, big ideas around parks are aimed at connecting people with Beth Bethel's recreational assets, making them easier to find, easier to access, and easier to enjoy. Village vitality uh, ideas all focused on enhancing the local economy, so they were a little less infrastructure focused and more business focused. Um, and also looking at sort of marketing and uh, uh, branding for the local community. And then we hit on this idea of community capacity, which sort of came up through the discussions, which is recognizing that, well, we have all these big ideas, how could we possibly all get it done? And the need to continue to look um, for ways to connect to the community and um, really harness people power. And also just, you know, make sure that people are communicating well, that information is being shared so everybody knows what's going on. Um, and then lastly, we have the clean water piece of it, which are the big ideas focused on stormwater improvements in and around the village. The implementation chapter has a lot of uh, goals in it. This, this table is a project summary sheet that's in one of the first few pages of it. Um, and it's broken out in, uh, it prioritizes things in high, high and medium and low and it ha indicates a time frame, And we tried to do that in order to be, you know, sort of realistic about when things can get done. Um, but also there are a lot of quick actions and, and the truth is, is that we didn't even put, I don't know, half of the quick actions into the plan, really. I mean, it was so many quick actions. And these are really important, I think, because this plan, you know, the, the project will ultimately end and, you know, you'll develop some new folks to help lead the project forward, but, Maintaining momentum is always key to keeping people interested and keeping people uh, actively participating. And I think the quick actions are really good ways to do that because they're inexpensive and they can often be done with volunteers. And people, when people see things happening, that's when they're going to be interested in getting engaged, right? So the implementation chapter looks at things like the downtown streetscape. Um, and this is a, that's probably the biggest single thing that's in the plan because it has a lot of parts and will probably take quite a bit of time to pull it all together. Um, the implementation chapter doesn't focus on these are all the things that you're going to have to do between start and finish of a project. Instead, it focuses on this is the thing, next thing that you need to do. And that's in part because sometimes you do a scoping study, for example, of like you could look at the downtown streetscape and, and discover that some of the things that are suggested really ultimately aren't as feasible as we expected. You have to do that next layer of analysis and look at things in a more detailed way to really understand it. We also look at neighborhood streets and that's the, the goal is really to make the connections um, from the downtown to the, the, the village as a whole and really expand on that. And we looked at Pleasant Street, Church Street, River Street, and Main Street as sort of priority areas. Um, but there were other streets that were identified in the big ideas section as well. Um, we look at parks, Danshell Park, Fort Fortitude, and Waterfall Park sort of rose to the top. Um, but again, there are other park ideas that are in the plan. And it's important to recognize that just because it's not in the implementation chapter doesn't mean it couldn't be done or shouldn't be done in the future. Um, and then when we looked at the village vitality piece, uh, we focused on identity and branding, some of which will get done as part of the BOREC project. Same thing with the wayfinding plan. Um, and then trying to find ways to help businesses um, improve their physical accessibility. That's a challenge, uh, trying to figure out how to do that. Uh, also, what came up was the idea of a pop-up use program, some sort of program to help utilize underused uh, spaces in the downtown. And then uh, facade improvement program ideas that uh, that the community can sort of move forward, largely using uh, the revolving loan fund or community development block grant funds to help um, businesses sort of redo the facades. And you know, one of the things that Trip said to me at one point when we were talking about this is is that you know business owners come and go, but the buildings are going to stay here in, in the village. And so having them look good just carries it'll carry from business person to business person because it always looks good and it adds to the value of the downtown. Um, and then the final piece is, well, not final piece, but the the, the capacity is that was the next piece of it. And we really struggled with how to mm -hmm. wrangle that. And ultimately what's in the plan is, is one thing, which is let's get together and talk more about capacity. 
Um, and then finally, stormwater. Um, there's a separate stormwater report, uh, and in it, you'll find uh, four uh, priority areas for stormwater treatments. And this, these are uh, the way this is, report is written. It's written in a way that DEC is going to be able to easily digest it and provide funding uh, for this particular stuff. Um, thirty percent. Yeah, the, with the, it includes thirty percent designs. And you and I should talk to. I should get you large versions of the of the thirty percent design plans. You know, that. at some point. Um, yeah. Yes, because when you flip when you flip to that, the the thirty percent designs are this big, which is useless. Yeah. So, we'll we'll talk about that. Um, and then the next steps are, are really going to be to look at project leadership. You know, who's going to lead the project or at least the individual projects going forward. After some discussions with the steering committee last week, I'm going to make some changes to the implementation section um, to really sort of indicate where there needs to be sort of an agenda. Some of, some of them are obvious. Some of them are, are jobs for, you know, certain committees or for this, the you, the Therese and the, the select board. Uh, but there are some other instances where it's like, we need someone to step up and maybe take this yeah. and move it forward. Um, yeah, having that conversation about capacity is gonna be really key. And then I think trying to review and prioritize the quick opportunities again, so you can continue to maintain momentum and keep things happening. Um, and then, as you go forward, you folks will need to sort of look at, okay, what projects are we actually doing and how do we need to line up the funding for those projects over the next, you know, how many every years it takes. Um, and then there's some really big things that will need to be ultimately budgeted for. And I think that's a, you know, longer conversation. Yeah, I talked to Rita at Two Rivers and told her once that when it's done, I mean, the wrapping of the grant to her too, so she can be on the lookout for the grant and stuff. Great. So my question is, are we going to get a binder of like all oh, this is this is going to be all put together in one binder or something so that I can have it to look at the plan? I mean, not the stormwater. The stormwater can be its own thing. Yeah. But I'm not sure. Are we? Are we? Is this how we're getting it? It's like this. I can I can make arrangements to get you the copies in whatever format you'd like. Yeah, I just yeah. I just yep. think it would be nice to have yep. a copy, you know, on the shelf so that I absolutely can, you know. Yep. And um, because, yeah, it doesn't have to be stormwater. I mean, once the draft for water is done, I can like, punch holes in myself. Right. Yep. But, but yes, I would like the plans. If they're just, um, if you send them to me, I could print them like 11 by 17. If you have an even big. I'll, I'll plot them for you, Charles. Oh, you guys are close enough. I'll, I'll plot them okay. for you. We'll, we'll make, I got, I'll, I'll deliver you, or I'll get you the. Um, the hard copies once it's in a final draft format or someone from my office will that and, uh, and we'll get you hard the big versions of those. Yeah, I was looking at it going. Yeah, I you'll want them to hand it. Like it's just a copy. Yep. <laughs> but it's Great. good. Thank you. So that's it. Like I said, I wanted to keep it short. Um, as I understand it, we can't hear Zoom. So you folks will have to type any questions into the chat. Um, and then I, but I would defer to the select board. Do you folks have any questions or comments? Oh, they lost their. Yeah. But yeah, they can hear, but they can't. We can't hear them. Oh, okay. The speaker. All right, I'll keep an eye on the chat. So, um, I just think that uh, Grace and Kate is obviously very helpful with the conceptual to do the stormwater management plan. Obviously, something that um, you know when the grant started that Tim Mills and I were working on, and so after Tim's passing, I reached out to Chris and then uh, Emily, right? And I was like. Uh, I need help. And so they were so helpful. It, they, I went to Du Bois and King. They sat down with me. They walked my new one project that Tim wanted done. And so I'm like, after that, I was hesitant. So they walked me through everything. So it was just, it was wonderful and extremely helpful. So I was really appreciative of, of that. And they kind of gave me the pluses and minuses of what we could do. So it was very helpful. So, you guys are going to be helpful Excuse me. Where we need to go to find this funding? Yeah, if you look in the, uh, when you get into the link, you can take it out of there. Each project is a table, and you can take the kinds of funding. Yeah. And then, so, yeah, absolutely, you know, you already see that, so that's where I focus. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And Rita was great about it. I said, look, I'm going to send you this, and then we'll just have to keep our eyes open about you know, funding and, and uh, obviously see what they prioritize. So, um, but it was a good, I mean, I've been on the steering committee and it was great to, um, 
the uh, wonderful gentleman from that did the accessibility. Was it Stephen? Yeah. He was great. Oh, what? He was so nice to work with. The trip was great. And uh, so I feel like that they brought in some really good people. Obviously, Rebecca, we couldn't have done it without her. And it was just really helpful i thought that and nicole we couldn't have done it without nicole and um it was very helpful that you know to meet trip and to hear his ideas and things he'd done in other towns and and same thing with steven and so it was really great because um i i think that it was nice to get some opinions and ideas from people you know outside of yeah. here yeah so this is still in draft form and it's going to be the Window needs to close for the draft by Saturday of next week. It's about the 15th. Um, and after that, I'll be uh, diligently trying to put together. I've already got comments and we've got here and it's focused. I'm going to make sure it's going to be okay. put it together. So we hope to be time to look at it more clearly. Yeah. Because they got the, well, what you sent was in their packet. And and stuff and so Jean's been informed. We've talked about different pieces, like little pieces, parts at times, but uh, no. mine is empty. Okay. His says two or something, but I think we've already read those. So <clears throat> this one says the committee was great to work with. Oh wait, here we go. From Paul Valley. Yeah, it was it oh. was really fun. Time to um, the table. Real eye opening. I learned a lot about all the parks I never knew about. It. So being on this committee, I learned a lot, and and especially getting to um, find out about parks that I never knew existed in Bethel. So it's a really good committee to be on. I guess I just wanted to say that, um, so everyone knows because this isn't really a thing yet, but what we're calling Waterfall Park is the piece of land that the town owns right before the bridge um, next to the dam there. And then RPC is a regional planning commission, just mm -hmm. so that we're not jargoning all over the place for everyone. Um, I'll just offer a couple of quick things first. Can I share your answer out loud? Yes. <laughs> Joanne just asked me where these books would be or the big books that you're all looking through as a plan. So it's posted right now on the Bethel for All website. If you go to Bethelforall.org, you can read and get all of these documents. Yep, all the chapters. And we also have supplemental reports up there. So if people are comfortable browsing online and commenting online, you can do it right there. And if you want the paper copies, I'm going to send a copy with you, Therese, to town office sure. and get one to the library and probably leave one here, if that's OK with folks. Um, and I just wanted to throw in a couple of big picture comments as well. This has been a really big planning process, both in terms of the amount of time that it takes and the amount of information we collected and gathered and synthesized and the number of topics we are looking at. <laughs> and it can feel overwhelming for sure. But one exciting part of this to me is not just the plan, not just the actions that we've identified to move forward quickly, but the potential for all of this to be resources to the many community groups and organizations working on some aspect of making Bethel better. And we already have some great examples of that playing out. I learned from Lisa yeah. today <laughs> that the accessibility audit proved really helpful to the library. And they actually identify some quick things like that front stairway that's unsafe. And Lisa said she just used it in a grant application as evidence for what they need. Awesome. And um, her from somebody over last weekend at the Bethel University graduation that there's a business owner look, or yes, business owner who had a business in another town looking to move to Bethel and is interested in the market study helping to make the case that her business concept would be successful here. I can make that pitch. So one of our big challenges going forward, I think, is how we get all the resource documents and the evidence out to all the different businesses and organizations that can use them. Um, you all can certainly help by remembering and pointing people in the direction of these resources, but an activity that I think every group, every board and commission, anyone listening could do as well is think about how could we bring some of this into our own work, whatever it is, whether it's select board policies, 
Conservation Commission Trail Building, <laughs> Recreation Committee, an Arnold Block or business owner. And we gave you those quick action overviews, one on accessibility, one on economic development, which was one step toward doing that, just to try to send the message that even if your entity is not written into the plan in any way, pretty much everybody in Bethel could do something to help move this forward. Okay, thanks. Okay. Kudos to the planning committee. Yeah. Uh, and all the work that you put into it. And one of the uh, ancillary benefits has been the community that has been built uh, through multiple meetings and walks up and down town. And all of the, the work that you all did in gathering the information. I think that that's a um, huge contribution to the town uh, in terms of bringing people together to to talk together about how we be a town together. It's been great. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. Everybody. Yeah, thank you. It's great. Anything else from the select board or any questions or Maybe they can see it. <laughs> I'll move next. It's it's like, it's over it's the morning next time. I got to move next time. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, at the plans or whatever, if you need me to come and pick them up, just let me know. Yeah, yeah, we'll work it out. That's not, um, you know, I won't be done with it until the end of the month. Yeah. But, Do you know um, there was a meeting that maybe you were supposed to do here one time with people from the state, and then I never heard from anybody again. And Mike, not Michael, um, Matt, Matt. Matt doesn't mention it again. So no, it must be we're good. Yep. Yep. He's reimbursing me when I submit them to the bills. So that voice says, so I guess if he wanted something, he'd tell me. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because I think it was really, some, some, of, some of us were sick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so now I think it's fine. Okay, great. I wasn't sure. I don't want to be nope. missing something. I actually, I, I, there, don't, okay. I think that might be Chris's screen because I don't have 10. Huh. Cool. Chats. Making sure. I've read them all. I don't have many great chats of mine. It maybe could, it's it not. Just just, be maybe it's just one. Yeah, because yeah, it's, I don't have any. Awesome. I've read them all. Um, it was mostly people saying they could hear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think you're right. So, yeah. Well, thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for thank coming. You. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's my So can people hear me? Yes. Oh, excellent. Great. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> thank you for coming. Thanks for coming. We'll see you guys later. Okay, I'll see ya. I can send it to Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Is this all the chapters? I have chapters one, two, three. Chapters one, two, three, and then the conceptual one I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got it. Thanks, Rebecca. Thanks. See ya. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. All right, so we'll roll right into Nicole's appointment here at 6.30. So thanks for coming, Nicole. There was some questions last time about, we talked about the time commitment, which you explained to me um, in email, which I appreciate, um, was that you were hoping that the time commitment would be to attend three to five meetings, each 90 to 120 minutes long during the spring and summer and aiming to start in late May. So have you got anywhere with this yet? I know you were sending it to other people. Yeah, um, we've been making progress. I'm not sure if everyone else can hear that echo or if there's anything I can do about it. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so we we are working with Laura from VCRD and she is helping rough out a timeline. So the it looks like, yeah, planning to start in late May, have that first meeting where for a lot of us, it's going to be our first time getting in the room together. So we'll get all of our, you know, questions on the table, look at the 
plan for the next three meetings and make sure that we're addressing everything that should be addressed. Um, and then the next you know, three meetings will be functional. And then Laura from VCRD will write up a report for us. Um, so that's, um, it's kind of, kind of simple, but that's how it's laid out now. And so the other people that, um, I think you had sent the letters, so, so other people have signed up to, to join from other communities. Yeah, and I've been reaching out to the select boards in um, the towns in the White River Valley that haven't had a chance to um, sign on yet. And a lot of these towns like Hancock, Granville, Pittsfield, you know, they're wicked small, like less than a thousand. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And the, their select boards are, some of them just have three people, no energy committees. So we're just kind of doing the rounds. I'm actually overlapping with Harry from T Rourke with the MERP stuff. Um, so it's yeah. working out really well for both of us that we're just able to be hitting everyone up at the same time. <laughs> That's great. So Dave, didn't you have some specific questions last time about maybe what their, I know you had a time frame question. Were you also curious about what her, their goals were? Or <clears throat> I, I, Cause I think that the, what you were trying to do, if I remember correctly, is that you're going to kind of investigate to see what the needs are for people as far as energy coordinators or an hours. Was that kind of what your hope was to do with this, to figure out what the need was? or is, not was, is? It is mostly about identifying that need. We started with a question. Should we share resources to hire an intermunicipal regional energy coordinator? And so as we open up that question, it doesn't become yes or no. It really becomes, where's our need for that? Can we address that need in a different way with the resources we already have? Um, and as we're, you know, talking, as I'm connecting with select boards, I'm also realizing that all the select boards are volunteers <laughs> and all the yeah. energy committees are volunteers. <clears throat> so yeah. it's actually kind of a random thing, whether or not these volunteers are interested in climate science or renewable energy and technology. Um, and recently when Green Mountain Power came through with their zero outage circuit proposal, yeah. You know, are any of us really qualified to vet that, you know, like properly? <laughs> yeah, no doubt, huh? I agree. Yeah. I definitely have concerns about, you know, if they come in and they want to do a solar panel field, is mm -hmm. how is that going to impact our town? And who do we ask for help as a resource that's neutral and well-informed? Yeah. Um, so that's just that, an example of something yeah. that we might want to discuss. <laughs> right. And, and that honestly would be the public service board because there's not a lot of context in which we can interfere with that sort of thing. But so Harriet Two Rivers does, is he Two Rivers Regional Energy Coordinator? But he's got, what, 30 some odd towns? He is specifically for the Municipal Energy Resilience Program. Oh, okay. So All if right. it comes to like, we need help with a window dressers campaign, he's hands off. Um, okay. And I definitely see a need for someone to mobilize volunteers for like the volunteers to have a point person. Um, yeah. But I'm getting ahead of myself because this is all going to be in the conversation. <laughs> okay, that's great. Well, thank you. I think that's really helpful. So um, we weren't, I don't know for sure if we have a select board volunteer, but um, we were certainly just needed a little more information, I think, to understand. So let me ask this question. <clears throat> Need is not the quest first question. It's what you're going to, how you're going to share resources from town to town. Is that the question you're going to ask first? We're going to be asking those questions at the same time. Um, you know, like, what is the need? Can we fill that need by sharing resources or just by better organizing within our own towns? I mean, from what following uh, uh, climate change uh, literature and uh, other <clears throat> news articles and whatnot, um, I think we did. Uh, you might want to really listen to Green Mountain Power or some of the other power companies because everything that I'm that I'm hearing and reading is going to end up being electric. However, we generate it is is a story to be to be discussed. But if someone 
like Green Mountain Power, as doing something as they proposed to us two weeks ago, I think uh, I think the the direction as far as listening and probing is how is that going to happen? How can we help get that to happen? Um, I'm not sure what your question is. Do you mean like how can we connect more with Green Mountain Power or how will this conversation help us connect better? Well, like, like, as I started with, it, it, we got to pay. I think we need to figure out the electric thing, which means generation, storage, uh, get rid of hazardous materials after those those three questions. Somebody other than us volunteers hopefully knows the answer. And when they do, how do we get it to work for everybody? And how long is it going to take to get there? They yeah, the and, you know, these questions about. come up and it's, you know, I'm not really qualified to answer them. I'm just a volunteer. Too, you know? And they're, they're huge questions about what we're going to do with our local grid. Um, so hopefully by being able to pull back and look at the other towns, maybe these other towns are asking that exact same question. Maybe they're not. Maybe we're the only people talking about it in Bethel. Um, so the purpose of this discussion is to figure out what those shared questions are. Um, and that one is one that I've heard a lot. It comes up at the electric vehicle show each year. Folks will just kind of come through and be like, well, yeah, but I'm thinking about the future. Um, and so that, you know, for me, business student, there's something I learned is that you can look at planning on three levels. Um, they're strategic, tactical, and operational. Operational is within one year, Tactical is about two to five, and strategic is five to 10 onward. And when we start talking about the grid, we're talking strategic. And a lot of what we do here, like on the select board or within our committees is operational. So when I think of energy coordinator, I think of putting someone right in the middle and looking at tactical. How do we get from here to there? If that makes sense. <laughs> Well, it kind of does, but I, I, I took from uh, uh, Tiana that uh, they are already at the tactical stage. They're not, they're past strategic with the which, grid. Which organization was that? Green Mountain Power. Tiana Smith, did you meet with her? No, yeah, she got the other Yeah, and I don't, I definitely, um, I, I don't mean to like throw doubt on Green Mountain Power. I just use that as an example because they're such a big entity. And us all here, you know, like we don't have the equivalent resources as Green Mountain Power. So if they did want to pull a fast one, it would be difficult to pull ourselves out of that. Um, and there's a few news articles happening in Vermont at the time about, I think one of them is in Bennington about where the solar field is located. Um, and there's a big hoorah going on down there. Um, because the residents are not happy with the decision, the select board's caught in the middle, and it's we're just not sure how it's going to play out. So just kind of thinking about what resources would we need to make sure that we are well informed um, and staying up to date on the knowledge and research that we need to make these bigger decisions as we go forward. So you're going to you're going to be looking for a regional coordinator that is uh, well-schooled and all this stuff to, and trustworthy. Good luck. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting to see the different models. You know, like we've been using the term energy coordinator. It could be a climate action coordinator. Um, a climate action comes into our economy, what we eat, how we dress, where we go to shop, how far we travel to work. Um, these are all climate action things as well. So maybe we want to look at our rural towns and switch up that role, tweak it a little, so it actually matches what we need. Would it, would it be fair to say, Nicole, that the quest, very questions that Dave is asking are what you want to ask of this group that you're pulling together? They are. <laughs> they definitely are. <laughs> well, I think to expand it further, it's also the that you're bringing up of the um the network where does thermal, that work right yeah. dave's looking at the electric but power and heat are kind of your two biggest 
power, heat, and water, really, our, you know, our utilities right. would have to be examined within this. And so I don't know if that's a good segue for you to kind of bring that up well, because it's a similar set of questions within it. It all, I agree, except for everything you've talked about requires power. Right. Everything you're talking about requires power. So I think you get the, the horse in front of the cart and know how are we going to get good, reliable, for lack of a better word, clean electricity. And not upset the neighbors, which you're talking about, it's happening in Bennington. This town went crazy. You don't see any solar fields in Bethel. Very few, most of them are on the roofs. And if there's, I can tell you two that are very unhappy neighbors. So, <laughs> Anyway, well, I'm not sure. I'd be interested in at least knowing if if I wasn't on that, I would be like, and not to be in, not that I'm going to be a negative Nelly, but I can tell you right now, if I'm there, I'm going to ask some hard questions. Yeah, and this conversation is moderated by um, the staff at VCRD. So it's not like us talking to each other. It's well, I mean, it will be, but we'll have a moderator that's someone who's a neutral party. So all opinions are welcome and encouraged because they're going to come out at some point anyway. Uh, <clears throat> so, I, you know, when you have a discussion with the average Vermonter, you know, I, the average Vermonter will say that they want to take care of the planet as best that they can, right? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and it seems like now that that um, things are starting to be put into work. Some of the questions that are starting to come out from Vermonters is, you know, like right now, Vermont emits about eight and a half million tons of emissions a year. <clears throat> and so what is the goal, right? I mean, you could say the goal is zero, right? We always hear zero, but you're never gonna get to zero. But what is the realistic goal that Vermont is trying to get to and we have to remember that on the grand stage of things, Vermont makes up a very, very small pinpoint of this whole map. Um, I mean, we're eight and a half million tons of emissions a year. In the United States, that's 5.3 billion uh, tons of emissions a year. So we make up uh, a quarter of 1% or less of the total emissions. So we're, we're a very small identity um <clears throat> to begin with so i guess myself and others are starting to have questions of where's the trade-off between we want to take care of our planet but we also want to be able to live and the cost of things you know we have to have that trade-off i mean we can we can all go green but if we're not here to pay for it after then that didn't help anything so and it doesn't seem like vermont, it seems like vermont a lot of times is the cart's way out in front of the horse and, and we need to rein that cart back in to say, what is the true goal here? And then when we hit that goal, what are we as Vermonters going to perceive changes? Like what, what is going to be the measurable change that I'm going to see out there? And I think it's very difficult because if you do the research right now, there's about six states out of the 50 states in the United States that are actually actively working on climate change policies. Only six. I mean, a, a lot of them talk about stuff, but there's only six states that are actually pushing things forward. And Vermont's the smallest carbon emitter in the United States by by capita. So, so out of all the states, 49 of them should be going before Vermont. You know, <laughs> I mean, we are already such a small footprint. So, where where is the goal? I mean, I guess what I would like to challenge the Energy Committee is, what is the goal? And when we get to that goal, what are we going to see for changes? And is it going to be worth, or are we going to get to the goal at the end of the day? We're going to have no money and say, we really didn't do anything. You know, where are we at? And I know everybody's got their own thing, but we're talking about really starting to spend a lot of money here. Mm -hmm. A lot. We're talking, there's legislation about, you know, directing, you know, what we can burn in our house for heat and oil. And we're, you know, it just keeps coming on and on and on. And and I mean, even like Dave was saying, solar fields and things like that are great, but they only work when there's subsidies. Once the subsidies are gone, then we have issues with it. Either the cost goes way up 
or like they're seeing in Europe, those big solar farms, they all went bankrupt. So like, how do, how do we get to that goal? So and, I think your issue is more basically, you know, obviously the energy committee is looking at the state set goals. So when you say that people have the car before the horse, it's the, it's the legislature. Well, I'm just saying if, if we're talking about putting a representative from that's going to represent Bethel towards this regional climate mm-hmm. um, initiative, right? That is is part of the raw piece, right? Mm-hmm. That's part of the world piece, right? But in order to get our citizens to buy into this, they need to be able to see what is what what is this goal that we're going to get to? What what is it that I'm going to get out of my money? <clears throat> what is it? I mean, I know there's a lot of stuff that the world is going to come to an end, but mm-hmm. I mean, come on. Um, so yeah. what it, what is the goal? Like, what are we going to get to? What are we going to perceive? Like, show me data. Like, yeah. like we're going to get to this, and this is what it's going to change. I think that's kind of Nicole's point. And, and you don't see that. You don't see any of that information. Yeah, I think that was kind of Nicole's point and impetus to do this with VCRD is because, you know, the state has set all of these rules that we need to be, you know, emissions by a certain time and we have to hit certain targets so i think that part of it is that nicole is saying you know as volunteers this isn't something that the energy committee can target and so it's it's kind of interesting the audio capture not registered (laughs) that it's interesting i definitely agree um so i hope i didn't cut you off um, I agree with what you're saying there, Therese. Um, we specifically were looking at the state goals and as they translate to the town goals. Um, but the overall goal <laughs> is to mm-hmm. stop burning fossil fuels. And I will tell you why. Um, before when I went to VTC, I started in the agriculture program. So I got a lot of science and really great teachers up there. So the earth that we were all like, had that humans evolved onto think like the renaissance or whatever um maybe maybe further back (laughs) before we started digging up oil um the earth that humans evolved into had a certain amount of uh not chemicals atoms in the atmosphere um and we can really boil it down to c h o carbon hydrogen oxygen As soon as we started pulling up oil, we were bringing up new carbon and hydrogen, not any new oxygen, just carbon and hydrogen. When you burn anything, it's a combustion reaction. It needs to happen in the presence of oxygen. So we're pulling up C and H, we're burning it, we're binding it with our oxygen, and we're not pulling up any new oxygen. So what we need to do is to stop burning fossil fuels, period. You don't see it on the media because I will tell you, my major was in media and communications and what's happening on the national and local news channels does not reflect reality. It reflects entertainment and ratings. So we need to dig deeper. We need to educate ourselves. And I do think we need a point person to really be well-educated. And I do see a need. Because me personally, SWP as a volunteer, audio capture, I am not bombarded registered. by people's opinions about climate change. And all I'm trying to do is help low-income people have well-heated homes. You know, like I grew up in a cold house with a single mom and our heating bill was always, she'd make this sound <gasps> when the heating <laughs> bill would come in. <laughs> you know? I want to, I don't want kids out there to have to hear their mom make that sound every time the heating bill comes in. So like my personal goal for this town is to keep people warm and get more money in people's pockets. Um, And, you know, how that's achieved is definitely a lot of different things, but I believe that's the core of climate action. Um, Also, Vermont is the fourth most forested state in the country. If we take a look on Google Earth and look across the country, there is an alarming lack of forest. So we do need to pay attention to climate action in this state and consider our microclimate of the mountains. And if we reduce burning fossil fuels within our microclimate, it will have favorable effects. So I think, and we could probably go around and around circles all day, but I think you missed what I was saying. Not saying that we, I'm not saying that we want to burn fossil fuels all the time. I understand that. But what I'm saying is when you have an issue, whatever your issue is in life, 
in this case, it's pollution, right? You, you would think that you would want to tackle the biggest polluters first, right? And what I'm saying is Vermont is the smallest polluter. So why should Vermonters, in this case, Bethel citizens, before anybody else is doing this, why should we be the ones leading the charge, spending all this money that we can't afford to still be the lowest emitter? Because we are paying the legal bills S -W -P -P for the biggest audio emitters not to duck out of all the policies. Because we're paying the bills to the oil companies. And as long as we're paying for oil, we're funding the people who are burning fossil fuels. It's we're in we're completely connected. You know, if we have to do like trying to attack the big folks isn't working. So we need one by one to divest from fossil fuels. Um, an example of that is some universities are divesting their investment funds from from funding fossil fuel companies. Um, and it's it's a pretty big problem. And I would say like the average person just doesn't have time to really dive into it and learn all these intricacies without really just devoting like weeks of life to it. <laughs> and I don't know if anyone really has that to really like dive in. I've done it because I'm a little crazy. <laughs> well, it looks like your request was uh, for the select board to possibly appoint a member to be the liaison to a potential regional energy group. I'm not sure if we have any takers yet. So is the group I would really is like group? to see either Chris or Dave join. Like you're saying really good stuff. You're reflecting things I've heard at event tables, you know, like and I definitely don't want just a group of people who are like, yes, let's do this. You know, like, let's get some opposing viewpoints in there. Has the group been formally founded now? Because I think that the last meeting when we were talking, that was kind of the thing is we point somebody to something that hasn't started yet. So yeah, she's hoping to start in May, I guess. She in said, May? Yeah, VCRD is getting or helping her organize, so. And hopefully, like, I, I see the first meeting as, like, the the last chance to get in um because we do want people to be able to attend all four meetings um so if you can make it to that first one then it's never too late <laughs> swb audio capture yeah. I, not I mean, registered I, would love to do it. I really would uh, i'm i'm devoted right now to the school Why? crisis so i <laughs> between this board and the school board and all the other stuff we got going on i don't have any more dedication time uh, a prop approximate time frame how much time would i be devoting it would be three to five meetings yeah so three four, to five we have four meetings blocked off i think they'll be about two hours each one of them will probably be in person but i'm pretty sure the rest will be virtual because we're all spread out oh so we can't slap each other around <laughs> <laughs> anticipated <laughs> Right, yeah, it's, it's on the. In I, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm interested. Okay. And you have Dave's email, right? Nicole, he's interested. Yeah, I think we both have each other's email. Dave, do you want to be, um, do you want me to include you on the updates from here on out? Yes, please. Okay. Any other Dave? takers? That's still here. It's going to be fun. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming and explaining the rest. That's That was helpful, Nicole. So and, thank you. And I will be attending. Yes, Jean. Uh, official agenda in person. Or, I think it's great to have a couple of us. And then uh, and then Jean wanted to kind of just link to the back end of this discussion, the geothermal pieces that... Um, sure. Jean's head. Before Jean does, um, with this audio issue that we're having, if Lenny muted, would that? Yeah. Would you mind muting yourself, Lenny? Or does he have something to add? Does he have a comment? Can't hear him. Can't hear you, Lenny. Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. I guess so. um, the uh, as I said in the email, there there is legislation that will probably uh, be taken up next year, not this year. 
uh, but it's been introduced uh, that would make networked thermal energy uh, a viable alternative for addressing the heating sector. A third of our greenhouse gases in Vermont are going into heat. And uh, as you know, the go down below the frost line and the temperature of the earth remains constant. And, and using the, the laws of thermodynamics, you can harvest that heat uh, in the winter and the colder it gets, the more effective it is at uh, providing heat for a dwelling. And then the summer, you can reverse the flow and you can take the heat from up here and bury it down into the ground. What comes back is cooler. And the hotter it is outside, the more efficient a thermal network is. In addition, by networking, not an individual drilling your own geothermal, but by networking uh, multiple buildings, you can, for those buildings that are large producers of heat, excess heat, you can capture that heat, put it back into the system, which makes the system even more uh, efficient in terms of heating all of the the people on the network the uh what's unique about uh vermont's piece of legislation uh, they're doing this in Ver in new york already by tapping into the uh gas networks that they have all over the state we don't have Vermont gas all over the state. But so what's unique about Vermont's uh, proposal is that it would enable the Public Utility Commission to recognize literally any organization that wanted to pool its resources to become a utility to provide that heat. The minute you become a utility, as we know with the water or sewer, uh, the funding becomes a completely different, it, it's, it's available at a very different level because you have, as a utility, you have a guaranteed uh, payback. You borrow X number of dollars to invest in infrastructure, <laughs> you collect that out of user fees. Over, so it's basically just like running a water. It's system. like running a water. So no special funding that at this point the state's giving to the, start that you're aware of. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. See, because one, see, right now we can't do that because we're not a heating utility. Right. All right. So the the legislation allows the PUC to create or recognize a Bethel as a utility once this is undergone. That heat is is zero uh, carbon. It requires pumps. Uh, and requires modest amount of electricity. It already hit, it works fits into whatever heating system you already have in a building, because we're getting, basically talking about a heat exchanger replacing your furnace, and uh, the 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 cost to the members of the utility are. Uh, basically, simply for the infrastructure, which lasts as long as your water pipes last. So it's the infrastructure plus the cost for them to have their existing furnace removed and replaced with heat pump? They don't even have to remove it. You, you're replacing it with, uh, it's, a, it's a heat pump. It's a thermal heat pump so that is placed. 
they must have something in their well, house. Yeah, that would oh, that yeah. yeah. They they have that they're replacing the heat transfer system in their furnace with the heat transfer exchange system that is in an indoor heat pump. So that's gonna last much longer than the electric. And since that's in the cold part of the country and up in the northern north New York? Oh yeah. Because um the more I'm not a scientist, but I did take physics. And anytime you take heat or cool from a medium of some sort, water if you're talking, you change the dynamics. So now that 50 degree water that you have taken cool from is no longer 50 degrees. It is now 55, 60, 65 degrees. So if it going on to the next person down this infrastructure of pipeline, and I got 50 degree water, she got 55 degree water, Chris got 60 degree water. So the efficiency goes downhill. And if you take cooling, if you take heat out of it, the, it goes the other way. So I got 50 degree water, she so, got 45 degree water, she got 40 degree water. So uh, universities have been doing this all over the place uh, with multiple wells, but not one well for every building. Uh, but it's enough to, and it's a closed loop system. So it's, uh, it, the whole system balances out. So how many gallons of water are you talking about? I mean, this is interesting I, to me I, because, it, you know, yeah, because I, of, I, I don't, I don't I mean, a lot I think of even like methyl, you're talking millions, millions, you, you, millions can, of you can use a chemical, but you don't have to use a chemical. That's part of the uh it, it's a there are something wrong i like free shit yeah so <laughs> the in, free heat so, or free cooling i'm on i'm on it <laughs> so the for example and is what caught my attention was when i learned that the school was putting in wood pellets the um the school is situated next to a trailer park, which is situated next to a town building, the fire hall, which is all of those are situated next to an, a commercial property. The school and the commercial property would both be energy produ heat producers. We also have uh, public spaces where wells could be drilled and pipes could be laid without disrupting any roads. We have a, and once you start with a mini network, it's expandable. So you could in stages over a period of time, you could bring in the entire town. Now that would have to be in the, and I'm not trying to be again the negative nail. I hate don't I don't like that word, but I'm thinking about pumping and friction loss and all that. If, if you start out with three people, three entities and a big well, and you can service them with six inch pipe. Okay, now we have got the Mascoma Bank and the town office we want to add to it. Six inch, six inch pipe of water is not going to get any water to the town office from the school. You're going to need it. How do you get water there now? How do you get water there? You're not, you're, you're transferring. You're, you're, without, I'm, I'm not going to get into the technical. I can tell you that it's being done. Okay, the, the technology is there. It is existing today. It is being done in New York, gangbusters. It is, uh, the legislation is coming. Nobody in Montpelier is opposed to it that we've found. Yeah. And so, my, so ultimately my question is, isn't whether geothermal is a good idea. Yeah. My question is, would the select board be open to having a meeting with some people who know what they're talking about a whole lot more than I do uh, and have put this legislation, legislative piece together along with uh, some folks from the schools, 
uh, and uh, and other interested parties to, to learn about this as a possibility. Uh, that yeah, I mean, I, is it something we should wait for until we can actually see the pending legislation? Nicole's saying on the same line of thinking, some cities have been recapturing heat from heat from water utilities, wastewater for heating homes as well. So I'm just, so your idea is that we should be aware of the legislation and maybe we should be open to have a meeting with somebody as the legislation is. And, and whether we it. want, well, I'm asking really if we want to actually look into it now to see what, if anything, we want to do to be more shovel ready because this is the kind of thing that will be fundable by IRA funds. IRA? The Inflation Reduction Act. Oh, okay, thank you. Federal. Too many initials. Yeah, everybody has that. So, so uh, this is the kind of thing that will be fundable by those kinds of things that continue to, that are coming down the pike. And it will... Uh, I've had some converse, initial conversations with Two Rivers. It is likely that it might also, it may also qualify as funding available um, from the, uh, the, Merck, the Merck funds. Oh, yeah. So the the question is whether we want to uh, meet to learn more about this option, not necessarily make any commitments down the road, but to learn about it and to see what, if anything, it has to offer before we commit to any other um, alternatives for converting the heat here in town. I. I I don't see there's any harm in getting more information or have somebody come and present something to us or learn more about it. I know from the little bit of time that I had this weekend of learning about more geothermal and the process, and it does seem like it's more location specific. So not all locations work. Um, so from what I gathered from information that, you know, there's certain certain things that they look for to be able to to use the system you know steam pockets water pockets things like that you have to be in the right situation so you know maybe if we got more information and maybe if then i don't know the state sponsored a grant so that we could do a feasibility study to see if you could actually do something you know um we've already got that you know the then, merc is already there then that would would be something i mean it it just seems like there's it's a, I don't know, there's, there's pros and cons to everything, but it, it seems like the, the biggest thing that came to my mind was reading through it is it's, it's really location specific. So it has to, um, there has to be certain uh, resources available for it to work, like steam pockets, water pockets, and things like that. It's reading about, but, so is that something that Harry, since he's the one uh, from Two Rivers doing the Merck funding, that if I reach out to Harry, he can come to the select board and talk about well, that? I would yeah. I would reach out to the people that actually put the bill together and have that. the expertise from okay. the other states. I would invite Harry to be part of that. As a matter of fact, I'm putting together, trying to put together a meeting with T Rourke to talk about the same thing. Okay. Well, if you let me know who those people are that I could reach out to and we could invite them to a future select board meeting. Um, let me know, <clears throat> just send me an email who it is that you think I need to reach out to and see if we can't get them to come to a future course. Mm -hmm. Given where Nicole is going with this and giving that group a little bit of time to meet to maybe not to not to push it off so far that it's not as useful, but to to see where that group kind of gets to and then pair a meeting where that group's also coming in and it's kind of a bigger discussion where maybe we can have some of the, the bigger questions answered. I don't know. Might make it more complex than it's needed to be, but yeah. getting information is always good to me.
we should we wouldn't be doing I don't know, my opinion is we wouldn't be doing our jobs correctly if we weren't looking at everything right i mean even though we might get it and say oh this isn't gonna work you know but at least we tried right so yeah. So just let me know who you want me to get in touch with and or maybe you want to do it after you talk to two rivers and have that meeting with them and well, let me see what yeah what comes with that meeting and yeah just keep me in the loop and maybe it's something we could schedule for, for like june or something yeah All right. okay. okay thank you thank you thank you nicole yeah, the only thing i'm going to do just be if, if the board's okay with it just because we got behind just a little, slightly a little bit it's before our um our last appointment is just maybe just take public comments to anybody that had something they were here just to do public comment and didn't want to be um waiting around any longer that that we would do that so if there's anybody that has any public comment it's not on the agenda now is the time if you're online can we hear them or they'd have to type still i think we're good right yeah okay, okay. so if, <clears throat> if you're online you have public comment just raise your hand there's anybody public comment in here? Doug, nothing? No? Was Joe looking for something specific? Oh, Joe Russo was here for that. Just listening. Bethel for all. Oh, perfect. All right. Thank you. Um, Paul says he's good. Okay. So here in um and uh Owen is here for Babe's liquor license renewal. <laughs> And, Might want to uh, get coffee, Owen. Yeah, so you're good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so here and none, we'll uh, get through public comment then, so we don't have that. And then, then we have uh, our six forty-five appointment, um, Brian Wright, in sorry, regards wait. to um, to talk about um, some Gilead Road slash Wright Road, and just before we get started, because we do have a new board member, just. We'll kind of like on a large scale catch you up on. Um, so there's, I don't know if you're too familiar where Wright Road and the tail end of Gilead Road um, is, but we have we have two pieces of road up there that is currently um, classified as um, well. They're Class Three roads, and a portion of those Class Three roads are not up to standard. So the um, the state allows you to classify certain. Well, in this case, some class three roads not up to standard. Um, if you're not meeting the standard, but then you don't get any money. So um becomes like an operationally class four. Yeah. Without being so we declass. We have a we have a few other roads in the town other than these two that, you know, they're just kind of, you know, either through um, you know, years of uh, not paying attention or whatever that, you know, you go to them and you'll say, well, this isn't up to standard or, you know, we're not doing the, you know, doing enough grading or doing things to it. Or some of them that we look at and say, why is this class three when, there's, you know, maybe it should have been a four or just maybe was labeled incorrectly or um, so we're kind of a little bit behind on that. And most towns are. Um, so we had some discussions from uh, Brian um some of it's road related, some of it's related to his development of he's got some land on on both roads. Um, so there's, um, uh, I don't know, roughly two tenths of a mile from from the farm to the end of right road that is right class four. Well, it's class three technically. Well, but... the first part of it's class three and then the rest is class four to Rochester border where we've driven up. Past. No, but I'm saying we have about two tenths of a mile from the farm to oh the gate that's yeah. roughly about yeah. so we yeah so on the right road we have about two tenths of a mile that so right now we maintain all the way up to the farm and then we turn around at the farm um, on plowing and and grading and all mm -hmm. those little activities so there's like I don't know if you've been up there but at the farm there's a gate or not a gate but there's it's an opening but yeah. there's there's fence on both sides yeah. and once you go past the fence we don't usually do any type of maintenance on that piece of the road where there's still like two tenths of a mile of that road that is what they call class three. So there's been some discussions um, last year about potentially reclassifying that road to either a class four road um, or to, to downgrade it to a trail. So, um, and then at the same time, we have similar on the, um, the upper part of the Gilead Road. So if you go up Gilead Road, at the very top where the house is at. That's Andrew's house. He's like the last house on Gilead. 
it, it, it sometimes you don't even know there is something else. <laughs> you would think you're, it's a berry path, but um, there, it, there's still um, 0.46 miles of road that is labeled class three road um, that we've also, so we were talking about going up there as a board to look at both, both roads um, to talk about what our options are to, you know, the options really are it's class three, then we want to keep it class three, then we have upgrades to do to the road, or we could downgrade it to a class four and do maybe a, a couple of things like, you know, making sure that there's uh, areas where water is not pocketing or pooling on the road, or you can downgrade it to a trail system, which then basically would leave it up to the private owners to, to work together to do maintenance on those roads. And they would have a right of way to their property because right now the one past Andrew's house goes to um, Mr. Sedgwick, right? Yeah. Sedgwick goes to Mr. Sedgwick's house in Rochester and yeah. Rochester had thrown up their access. So Mr. Sedgwick's only access yeah. is via that road. Next. These are these are the roads that the 18 wheelers <laughs> put in their, uh, yeah. their Garmin system. And it says this is the quickest route. Mm -hmm. And then they get to the end of the road and go, we can't yeah, get there exactly. have to back down the road. Yeah. So, and, and we have, yeah. So we have a bunch of these things. Well, at least that one's paved. This yeah. One's we just have a, a goat path, but we do have some others. Um, so, Brian, Brian's one of the um, adjacent owners on two of these roads. And, um, um, and then there's some other um, owners. There's yeah. um, Andrew's family kind of, they're on each side of the road yep. on the, on the right road section. Yep. And then, and then when we're on the Gilead Road, you guys are on the right hand side. Are you side on both sides? Are both you on sides yeah, Gilead okay. too? Because yeah, Brian had an easement, right? You just have an easement that comes out on Gilead. And then there's right. another owner there. On yes. Yeah. yeah so there, there's a couple. So on the Gilead piece, there's three uh, owners of right away and owners, and then on the, the right road, there's two. So. So Brian had some, um, so we had talked to Brian back in uh, formally October, I think was the last time. November. November. So at that point we were, um, we were getting to the process where we were going to set a time to go up and cause we have to go up there and um, physically go look at the road as a. Yeah, if we were gonna throw it up, that's part of the If we were gonna change any of the classification of it, we have to go up there and have a meeting on. So we'd have like an informational meeting on site. So anybody could come and voice their opinions on it. Um, and then do do um, some uh, some legality pieces of it on, on a couple of the questions that Brian had. We were waiting for some of our legal um, answers to come back and then by that time snow had flied and you don't go up there in the winter um, and now we're it's mud season so now now we're kind of waiting for it to dry out and then we can make another time to go up there and as a committee so but Brian's back tonight he had um, a couple of concerns that he had sent in ahead of time to Therese and I don't know did those get to all the board mm -hmm. members yeah okay um, so floor is yours just want to make sure we got Denise up to <laughs> sort of <laughs> okay first the uh um gilead road i was wondering what the status is on that because <clears throat> when, after we had the meeting here the minutes after um within two weeks the road crew was supposed to be up there and do some use ditching and um covert work ditching and a new water bar was needed and that was 17 months ago and i'm just wondering uh, when's that going to happen so, water's still running down the road we still got the same issue yeah did a so aj and morgan went up they just did some tree trimming was that all they did i thought that they did some ditching i haven't done anything all right so that's fine we have three people now so last summer we had two so we have three people um so i can talk to morgan about that because we said yes we need to get the water off the road we know that we need that the town needs to do some ditching and basically it was from uh, I think just after Andrews to where your access is. And I, well, yeah, um, I want the water stopped coming down where my access is, but the water starts with it's probably 600 feet up at the, at the height of the land with uh, no, with no ditches or water bars on yours, but the road, the, the water that comes off your access, we're not going to address, but we should, will address what's in the road. Cause if you have an access, I'm assuming that your access is crowned and that your water's coming off from both sides. 
access to their field. But you just have an easement? Correct. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I misunderstood that. Um, so the water runs down the road from 600 feet up the height of the land, and there's no place for it to go but right down the road. There's no ditches, no water bars. So it's and water that's running off from the field down the access. Okay. Well, you and I lived up there when the water was running down the Yeah. Line, right? Yeah. Water was running right down the all right, so we need to work out with AJ or uh, excuse me, Morgan and AJ and Todd. So put that on there. I'm not sure how you're gonna stop the water from running down the road unless you put in water bars. Well, and I understand that water bars are not an option. Well, we can work that out. The water's coming down off the field. Um, then no, it's coming down the road. It's not coming down up. Down the road. It's, it's coming from the. You go up the road and it is kind of slope on the left hand side. It goes up yeah. the road. The field is downhill, so it's coming. Yeah. Probably from you know. Yeah. Yes, on the left hand side. That's fine. I, I'm sure that we can go out. I mean, obviously, we're not going to make it a class three road, but we we can deal with some of the issues. We do know and understand and acknowledge it's our responsibility to get the water off the road. That's clear. And um, doesn't have to be perfect, but we can do a couple things. So we can talk to Morgan, and um, we both we all know that uh, Kinsley Hoff is going to be doing some logging up there. He's an agreement with Mr. Sedgwick, and we made an agreement with him, and so that's all good. And and um, got that in writing. He's got his permit and whatnot. So how is he going to fix the road up? He what the deal was with with Kinsley was he and AJ and Morgan walked it because there's a couple of really of couple of questionable culverts and it's not Kinsley's responsibility to to deal with that if it's um you know what I mean he's going to put some material over the top of him feels like he'd be able to do what he needs to do and it's not fair to hold him up to you know what I mean to repair those culverts if they need it his plan I believe with Morgan was to put some material over the top of him he felt like he'd be able to get now it wouldn't be a big deal and if at the end of the project they needed you know upgrading and he would take care of it so and uh, something, so that wasn't a big deal. We did talk about, obviously, we don't need to get a lot of there. Um, he does, and Mr. Sedgwick does. And the turnaround will be in Rochester, will be in Bethel. So there are some areas that he's going to have to, that he worked out with AJ Morgan. He's going to bring in some material just to, for the couple of areas. Um, that the, the town is going to bring in material? No. <laughs> Kinsley is. We don't need to put a log truck up there. I know that I guess the culverts aren't my question. It's from the height of the land down. I understand that there was a meeting up there and nothing can be touched on the right hand side of the road in the town right away. That's the only way you're going to get rid of water coming down the road. No, that wasn't the case. The case was that we just need to be strategic about where we're going to push the water off. There's some there's some areas um, on uh, Andrew's side that there's trees and stuff where we could easily divert some of the water. We're just not going to divert it in the middle of his, you know, farm access to the field. So we did talk a little bit about that. Um, so that's fine. I, I can uh, work with AJ and, and Morgan about uh, addressing some of the issues, you know, to get the water off. Because this is a different story than I'm getting from Kinsley. Well, Kinsley, I'm not worried. Kinsley and I have an agreement in writing. He already went up and spoke to, um, to and spoke with um, Morgan and AJ. They walked the whole thing. We have an agreement in writing. He has his permit, and um, I wasn't present for his, you know, conversation with AJ. But we, AJ and Morgan, but we did put it in writing. So, um, I think he well, uh, he told me that when he went up, the first thing that Morgan, you told Morgan to tell him that you can't touch anything on the right hand side. And that's the only way that water is going to get off yeah. the road. Well, he we also, um, we also put Kinsley in touch with uh, Andrew so that they were also able to meet about so that they were aware of what was going on up there and what we put in writing, um, Andrew and um, Bev as landowners agreed to. So I'm not concerned about that. How we deal with is our problem. So, so is it is it is there going to be water bars that way then to get the water off? I don't know. I'm not the road funder, so I'll have to work. I'll have to talk to AJ and Morgan. I'm sure if they have any concerns or questions, they'll work with Andrew and and uh, get things addressed. And and just because we may need to dump water doesn't mean we need to dump it in a place that inconveniences. No, there's plenty of places down through there. Yeah. We talked about this yeah. back then. 
And uh, basically, my brother said, no, it isn't going to happen. There's going to be no water on my property. And yeah. that's the way you left it. You said, OK, that's it. Yeah. And there's not going to be any water. Yeah. Well, I think the issue was more where water bars were. But I'm I'm confident that we can work something out. Because I just assume so we'll the care. town did. Uh, Excuse the me? I just assume the town did the part to, to get the water from running off. You know, from in front of my right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have. I want the town to do that, not Kinsley, because I'm yeah. I'm, I'm friends with Kinsley, and I can see this is going to turn into this is going to turn into this is a recipe for disaster for Kinsley. Yeah. He gets done logging up there. He's not allowed to fix up the road the, the way that he he does a good job. You ought to see you ought yeah. to see the job. I, I, I if you got if you guys have if you have a chance to get a town road fixed up for nothing. You shouldn't discourage anybody from doing that. No, and we haven't. And I've had multiple conversations with, with Kinsley, and I, I feel confident that he's going to be a great steward of the road. And um, because I, he was told, he was told by the owners that uh, he could go on the left, they could go on the left hand side to make the road, but couldn't do anything on the right hand side. Well, I would hate to steer anyone wrong at this point. I don't have the signed agreement with Kinsley in the letter that we put in, but it's all agreed on, so it's, it's not a problem. But I certainly will talk to Morgan and AJ about that. I'm not sure what they're, I know they're upgrading this next week because they morning probably won't get to it tomorrow, but I can also reach out to Kinsley and see his time frame so that we can get our work done before Kinsley starts. So normally with like stormwater runoff stuff is if the, you're allowed to maintain existing infrastructure. So if you have an existing, I'll make it up. If we had an existing uh, water bar that does spill off into their land, then we could, we or others could continue to maintain that piece, but you can't create a new piece without having permission. So like I'll make it up. So from my recollection of that road, when I put up there last year is a majority of the storm water uh, is, well, if I'm walking down the road from, from your house, a majority of that water is on the left side of the road. And some of the ditching is kind of not up to par. Um, so it kind of flows up and over the road and then kind of kind of goes wherever it wants to go. You're talking where they plow, Chris? Yeah. Uh, yeah, because we walk down, we walk down the whole road there. And you get to some of those areas where you know somebody had been out there with you know a Jeep or something, and you know, there's some of those little muddy bog areas and there's a couple of culverts. And where the culverts are at, the water. The water goes naturally to like the back end of, of the farm property, um, but I think there was one section that was uh, near an entrance. I think of the field that that your dad had concerns about because water was yeah. spilling over into that without yeah. permission. So it is not to say that we we can't divert some water off onto their farm field, but we'd have to do it with their permission if it's new. So that would be something where where Morgan will go up and, and talk with the landowner and say, are you okay with, if make it up, if we put a water bar here and you're gonna have some discharge of water onto your land that's gonna go in this area, are you okay with that? And then that would be up for the landowner to say, yes, no. If it's not, then we go back to the drawing board and you know, maybe we have to divert that water farther down before we can uh, outlet it. So, so when, when you do greater ditching, <laughs> which does a good job. It's about all you need most of the road as far as I'm concerned. So you go down the road where the grader goes off like that. Those are all illegal. If you ask permission to all those people that you if you can dump water on their property. What? So you're uh, doing it there. You know, so I'm talking about stormwater discharge. That's what I'm talking about, stormwater discharge. If we have, if we install a new culvert then in a new culvert that wasn't existing, then we have to make sure that we're not diverting ex that's new storm water onto someone's property. What's the difference? But in regarding culvert, if it's a culvert, if it's just a greater ditch off, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Do you know, Chris, if the same rules apply? I mean, if, if you have a, a ditch line, for instance, from, uh, let's say, let's say it, I know it doesn't, but let's say on that specific part of the road, there's a ditch on each side of, of the road, which there isn't. But if there was one, we're allowed to maintain anything inside what that right way would be. So we can maintain the ditch line. But all that ditch line is doing is it's carrying water to the next spot to um, for a crossover, whatever that is where the discharge would be. Um, if we wanted to discharge water, then then it has to be legally we have to get um, permission from the landowner, whoever that may be. Then so like I'll make it up like so. Um, an example is when we were doing after the spring flood of 2019, 
I was helping to do some uh, some of those four jobs that we did in the different areas of the boroughs of town. And can't remember the road, but we were up over uh, East Bethel area on a road that didn't have a culvert that needed a culvert. Um, so I had to go to the landowner and get permission. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So when we put in a new culvert, that is okay that we <clears throat> charge stormwater onto his land. Um, and go is a is a courtesy to the landowner, maybe, but yeah. Vermont state statute says you can you can do it. In, the town can do it if it's needed. You know, obviously, you you couldn't do it in somebody's field, probably without unless they said you could. But in this case, where you're doing it in the woods, you don't need you don't need to get permission by state law. I think it's generally it's courtesy. You know, my understanding is that certainly, like I said, we're putting in a new culvert. I'm sorry, we have a water leak, so I'm trying to deal with that too. <laughs> but um, like you said, sometimes it's just courtesy. It's like us. We're going to do this project in front of your house. So we're gonna put you know you and Morgan and the person doing the contractor together to make sure your accesses are staked out and where you want them and how they're done. I mean, we just try to operate in a you know in a just using courtesy. So and I think it, and I think I was talking to Therese today that things will probably be dried out up there, what probably by mid-May. Hopefully. <laughs> still three feet of snow. So I guess we were thinking yeah, of, you still have a lot of snow there. Yeah, yeah. I think tentatively we were thinking about maybe the end of May to have a yeah uh, a special session where we'll go out there to look at, and look at both both roads um in hopes that that the spring thaw is, is done and dried up. Um if it isn't, then maybe we have to prolong it an extra two weeks or whatever. But I think the the idea at this point is the meeting that we were gonna have last. November that we would have it in May, um, the second, or so it'd be the fourth, fourth Monday, unless we do a special day um, to do that, to go look at those. But I will reach out to Kinsley and see what his time frame is, is when he's going to start and make sure that we're there first. I think he's, uh, yeah, sounds, it sounds like a different story than what he told me. He said, he, he, you know, he could do anything going up on the left. Well, yeah. we have every, I have it all in writing and I just don't have it in front of me. So I would hate to go. And he was happy with the agreement that we made as with Andrew. So, I, you know, I, I, but I just, I would hate to. Because know, if he, cool. my point is, if he starts going that way to improve the road for logging, then you're changing the center line of the road mm -hmm. for in over a hundred years, you change that, change it, change it. Right. And then you're going to have the problem that you had with your, class four ancient roads where you were trying to figure out where the roads went. Yeah, no, I agree with that. You're right. I mean, yeah. So I'm just, you know, I think that Kinsley's going to be a great steward of it. I think he's going to do a great job for Mr. Sedgwick. I think that he was certainly, he and I believe Andrew, have, you know, had a good conversation about what they needed. And so if, if he was going to put anything down, so I, I think it's just going to work out fine. So, but certainly I will reach out to Kinsley to find out what his deal is and his time frame. So, and again, yeah, we'll look at tentatively, whatever, end of May, first of June, yeah, he's still got get up there to do, do the work that needs to be done. Yeah, if he's just got three feet of snow. But so, <laughs> and I did, uh, you asked him an email questions about policies and procedures. I feel like, I mean, I answered those, all those questions. And I did go over that email today with Morgan to make sure that everything I told you about hydrologically connected segments and how they choose and how they, he, he said that it was all accurate. So, so that's for you had sent me an email because you were about the Paul about the procedures for brush cutting tree trimming ditching and culverts so that email that I sent you with all the information about the 2020 culvert survey the hydrologically connected segments how they track what needs to be done and I did go over that this morning with Morgan um, just to make sure that I missed anything that I needed to tell you tonight or anything and he felt like that email was thorough and that so that is how they each minute that so I just want to let you know. I just so the town, the town is in charge of brush cutting it within the right of way. The town, if you know, I, I like I said to you in the email that generally Morgan's focus is on you know class one, two, three roads, and usually it comes to their attention when it's maybe affecting their plow trucks or equipment or, or encroaching on something, or we get a complaint from a from a neighbor. Then uh, tree trimming and brush cutting is not our first priority in the summer obviously it's it's grading ditching hauling material that sort of thing but when it's brought to his attention uh, he does keep a list and try to deal with it but on class four roads no but you know the others that's how he tracks it is the way i explained it to you in the emails about uh roads 
class four roads that needed in the that need brush trimming in the land on the island. That's not really a priority for us. Class four road maintenance has to be done. I think it's a oh subject to public good, and, you know. Or giving somebody else permission. How about that on somebody else's land? Or giving someone permission to do it if they had a yeah permit to work in the right of way or something if that was granted. But um, but anyways, I just want you to know the email I sent you about all that was was right. It was probably more than you ever wanted to know about the DEC and hydrologically connected segments and how that all works. But so it was good. I just wanted to let you know I didn't miss anything. I asked for it. If I should. There's some additional information I needed to provide. So uh, something is going to happen this summer. Excuse me? If something is going to happen to get the water from running down the middle of that road. On Gilead. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And I'll make sure it's in the minutes. <clears throat> on to uh, um, the ditching project on my property. Yeah. How was that? I know this hydrological blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who chose that section of the road? Actually, I did with um, Rita Cito in Two Rivers. Um, I'm not sure if Alan may have been out to gone where I don't remember the, the time frame. Honestly, I think it was before Alan left. And so, um, <clears throat> so anyways, actually, so I did. Um, I, myself and Rita, we kind of look at the places that, if you're ever in town, let me know. I have a binder like this. And as I explained to you in the email, um, Two, we, two rivers goes through and we have to do as this. We have a municipal roads general permit that we pay about 1500 a year for. And by, I think it was whatever I said to you in the email, 2037 or something, we have to have all the roads mm -hmm. have to adhere to that. And um, so what we do is we you write this letter of intent that you're going to get money. And then if we get the money approved, we, you know, we pick a project and that project was, we knew we had a culvert, we knew we had um, ditching, a uh, burn removal under the under the um, guardrails. And it was actually a segment that we chose because it was either medium or high priority. So that's how we chose, that's how we choose the projects that we end up doing. We did Christian Hill that way. We did, um, oh my God, we, you know, we're always doing them. We do them every year. Um, we've done some on Hooper Hollow and so, that's how it got chosen. It's funny. I just wonder why it, mine was, it was chosen just along my property and it gets to their property and it, and it shuts off because my property all up through is dry. There's not a, there's not a ball. It didn't even wash out in Irene. There's yeah. never been a ditch here. Yeah. There's never been a ditch here. Except and, the one uh, you put in. What's that? Except the one you put in. Where is that? Alongside the road, exactly where they're going to put one. Yeah. The With one, your tractor and your straight blade. Yeah. The one that's three inches deep. Oh, well, one of the six inches deep and you dragged all the material out in the middle of the road. Okay. Yeah. So six what inches, okay. so yeah. we so that's, that's all you need. Is, it's just chosen. So when they we had nothing to do with it as far as labeling, whether it's a high priority, medium priority, low priority. That's what two rivers did based on the stuff by the DEC, Department of Environmental Conservation, on how it graded. So it just it never came up and that's where it was. And we looked at it and we knew we'd be able to grade and do some, we're always looking to do berm removal under guard risk. So berm removal, we needed to replace a culvert on Gilead, um, which was part of that process and ditching. So basically it just, we start looking at the need and um, of who's where and your number came up. So, and we have a $25,000 grant. So that's why you can only do Certain, and they only allow you to do certain segments. Like there's pieces that don't qualify. So, <clears throat> so you just got chosen as your just your number came up. Um, and I'm wondering if Andrew here is making legal decisions for the firm. Is he on the deed, or is he? Uh, does he have a power of attorney to make decisions? I wouldn't know, and that's none of my business. That's not part of the discussion. I don't know. Well, anyway, I, I, got, I guess I just want to look through these, and you can have them. So I don't know if this one was this is the this is where you propose to do the ditching along just along the ground. So do you are you a poll? I mean we by 2037 we gotta do everybody. So when I spoke to you, you said you weren't opposed to the project and we certainly, you know, we gotta grade the road, crown the road, put in a ditch, stone line ditching. Um 
you know, like I said, your, your number didn't come up out of malice. It just, you happen to be on the list that needs some work. Well, the, on their property. They're the only farmers I've ever known of that hates a ditch. Well, I will tell you this, Brian, that section of Ray Road doesn't qualify. Only your section, I say your that? section. Why is it? Because it's, not a, because it's not a quote unquote hydrologically connected segment. We had some other pieces that we wanted to do and uh, of not your road, but of somebody else's road. We can't because if it's not, you know, I can't quote you the specific criteria, but because yours is right there near the river and the way that the, um, it's not crown, or that's our belt, not crown, there's Firm under the guardrail. It just, it just came up. But when you get further away from the river and further, up, they don't qualify for this MRPG permit. So, but if you're in town, I could I don't show you. Get, I don't need to look at, but I there is, uh, you know, from my mailbox, probably 150, maybe 200 feet. There's a ditch. It could be, it come down into a culvert, and mm -hmm. but that's the only ditch that the town has maintained. Ever yeah. since I lived here, I know it's kind of interesting because only recently did we start paying this money for this municipal roads general permit. This is something that the state handed down to us. They're the ones who decided this, who said we have to be in compliance by 2037. Yeah. The money comes from B Trans. Like, this is so. um, the municipal roads general permit. Yeah, but be able to under act something. Oh, like it came down to God, act. I don't, know. 16, I don't remember. 30, but. You know, that's, that's the whole thing of Vermont being a Dillon's rule state. We only have the authority granted to us by the state. So if they come and tell us we're going to, you're going to pay 1500 bucks a year and you're going to have this inventory done and you're going to do this, we just have to do it. So yeah. there was certainly, that's the only reason um, you just, your number came up. And, and I believe it was myself and Rita. It was, it was an Alan and Morgan was an area. So we just, we let no, that was a different topic, uh, but we do, um, so it was just three to nine, we just happened to look through and see basically who's next, who's high priority. Because I am opposed, I am opposed to it. Um, I'll listen to what they want to do, and uh, but <clears throat> 40 years, at least 20 years, I've been trying to get you to clean ditches, and they're not allowed to clean ditches up at the farm. They built their fences, I guess, I don't know, somebody said they can't because the fence is in the is in the way in the ditch yeah. line where you got to move the fence and clean. And those ditches haven't been. And um, they had a his father had a some kind of agreement with the town that he would maintain the ditch. I don't know himself, and because he cleaned some out, and Alan took some stone up. It was like two years ago. Could be. I mean, you know, I, we have a road foreman who, and the road foreman does what the road foreman does. But in this case, you know, we're installing and ditching and berming grade all within our right of way. So um, we're not doing anything malicious. We're just trying to adhere to the permit guidance. We wrote the grant under this guise of um, this was the project, and um, so because I, I, I don't, you know, I, they just it, it just happened to be that they don't that portion of right doesn't qualify for the program. It wasn't I didn't pick you over them. It just you just it just happened to be your segment. You no, know, they the town has showed favoritism. The farm for well, a year, four years, know, I years. and I think it. I think that this is. But we're not going to get off the tracks. No, no, so we're not. But I'm, I'm just. Here, here. You're going to listen to me. That, no, I, I I'm not going to get riled up. I just, I've got a point. If you're not going to follow the formal system tonight, I'm going to follow the normal system. I know what I'm we, thinking is. Hold on, uh, pump the brakes for a second. We asked for specific complaints that you had to write them down. What we're talking about now has nothing to do with any of the complaints that you yes, brought for us. Yes, it does. It's, it does it's, not. It's ditching on right and, and what happens is we have a good discussion. We don't have a good discussion. And what happens is the wheels come off the bus and we start to come off right now. I'm just trying to get us back on track here. Because what this is starting to turn into, just like it does every time, Brian, here, is it becomes a dispute between your family, your side of the family, and his side of the family. This has nothing to do with the town. We're not showing favoritism towards yeah, anybody. You have for years. No, we have not. Yes, you have. And if you're going to continue this, then we're going to tell you to leave tonight because that's not true. 
We have not shown anybody any favoritism. I, because my biggest concern here is uh, is the favoritism, and it's also it, uh, there is no favoritism. So I, one one of my priorities. biggest, just hear me out. One of my biggest concerns here is um, the conflict of interest that we have here with Therese being related to the farm family in the farm family. That's a big, big okay. Big Brian, yeah. Brian, this is your last chance, and I'm going to tell you to leave. And then, uh, so do, would you like to take up the next item that you have? Because we're not going down this road. We're not going down. It, yeah, we, I, gave, we gave you we gave you some really quality time tonight to bring in uh, your your uh, concerns. We've gone through your concerns on Gilead, which it sounds like we had a very constructive, positive discussion of and, and a timetable of when we're going to do this work. Um, and now the last piece that you had um, at the two things was to talk about the town sanding. In or sound, sanding and plowing in around the farm. No plowing the sanding. Okay, so so what is the the issue that that we have? No, I've I've sent Therese the yep. pictures. And they have the pictures. I gave them the pictures that you sent and your email that you wrote and um. On, Did you see the? Uh, I gave I gave it to them. You sent an email on November eighth, twenty twenty two. So they have the they have that. They have um did the you, photos and did I point did it did it point out where the uh original turnaround was? Yeah the one beside the house. It's yep. there. We have a picture. And this picture you sent a picture of the sanding and you sent a picture of the house. So yeah I gave them that I gave them a copy of email. Okay so when uh um the school bus the, the the, the town truck always used that turnaround. Um, used to? Always, always did until 15 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever. Used the turkey original turnaround. Mm -hmm. The milk truck did, the grain truck did, the grader did. And actually, um, the school bus never came above McIntosh Hill. Always turned around to McIntosh Hill uh -huh. until uh, the, the kids were got old enough to go on the school bus. My brother went down to the school board and says, I ain't got time to take the kids down to school. I pay taxes enough. Um, you're going to come up with a school bus. So they came up and inspected that turnaround and they, and they used that for 18, 15, between 15 and 20 years. It's a safe farm turnaround. When the milk truck stopped coming with a straight job and, and towing a trailer, behind it, they couldn't turn around there anymore. So that's when the whole yard up there was reconfigured um, yeah. by the by the owners, by mm -hmm. the homeowners, reconfigured so the truck the truck with the trailer could back all the way down to the barn and then pull out. Well that's when uh, probably as a favor to the farm, that's when the town started backing all the way down 150 feet down to the milk house and sanding. And coming out, and and their your your response from the town was do that for safety reasons. Well, why did you start backing down there if it was unsafe? And yet, when the original turnaround was going. Well, I actually talked to um, today the prior road foreman Gary Slack um, because I wasn't sure of the history of the turnaround, and, and Morgan's memory was that Gary took him up there, and so he's been doing that. So I called. Gary today, you know, Gary, and um, asked him what he knew. And he said that, that yes, that the turnaround used to be where it was originally, always where he turned around. And then that when the trucks, milk trucks, that's what you're saying, got bigger, that um, Rick put in that, you know, second access to because the big trucks couldn't turn around there. So he said he did not have a conversation with Rick or anybody. He just decided that it was a Pain in the ass and Gary to, to do a three point turn there. So he decided that on his own volition that he was going to back down and that was the way he was going to do it. And they've done it ever since. And he said he didn't get any permission and he just said, I just did it. Nobody complained. And so we've been doing it ever since. And that's that's not right to be standing in somebody's private. <clears throat> it costs money. It's, it's coming out of the taxpayer's money. Well, the way that, that you know, Gary looked at it and the way that Morgan looks at it now. And, can't speak for Alan or, or Mr. Hyde. Um, you know, Gary was like, look, I just, I, you know, we don't back all the way down to where the milk truck is. We just back, drop the plow, but we'll sand and, you know, and head out. So he felt that it was easier for him. And, and Morgan does the same thing. And he said he feels, you know, for him, he's done it the same way 
uh, as far as Morgan was concerned for about 16 years. And he doesn't feel that he spreads excess sand up there and that he just does it for, you know, their safety and it just makes it easier. And they start plowing sanding on the way out. And Morgan said today, you know, they also have other groups they have to plow where they plow and sand their turnarounds. Oh, Hooper Hollow, Chase Road, Poplar Manor, Old Route 12. And he listed off, you know, quite a few. So, but I, I was unsure because obviously it wasn't here. So I did. So I called Gary, figuring maybe Gary did. He did. Me the whole story. So that's Gary, how it started. He and told it, me the same thing. He said, he said, I backed down there and I probably shouldn't have. Yeah. Well, that's not what he said to me on the phone today. I spoke to him. He just said that's what he did. And, and, Rick didn't ask him. He didn't do it as a favor to the farmers. He did it because it was easier for him. He said he didn't want to, he didn't have to keep making these three point turns. And so that's what he did. And, and it's caught, but it cost the taxpayers money. Sand well, I mean, money. And, uh, we dumped a ton of sand up there. What's that? There, there's, a, there's plenty. Um, but I mean, get a price from Dylan to go up there and sand it every three times, four times a week and see what it costs. It's expensive. So that's the what we've so, been doing. And we're not doing it as a, favor to anybody we have to turn around i mean there is a portion of you know that's just where the road goes it goes up past there and we have to turn around and you know for if the road foreman feels that it's a issue for him and it's safety and it then that's it but we're not far we don't go all the way down with the milk truck yes you do well, i asked morgan and he said we did not no, no. You go far I don't plow it. So you I go far enough so it's on private land I, you know what I'd, I'd, I'd rather have you stop in san gary slacks driveway he worked for the town for 50 years. I, so I think at this point, yeah. in private, if you're going to stay in private guard, I'm a, I'm a taxpayer. I'm concerned. I'm trying to, you guys want to save money. I no, want to no, money. Your concerns been heard. And, you know, it, it, again, it, if the town decides that that's the easiest way to do it or the safest way to do it, or then I, I think the only thing actually hearing this now is probably the only thing that we should have done. 15, 16 years ago is get the property owner's per permission to turn around there, right? Or something that doesn't sound like that was done. But maybe as long as Andrew and his family is okay with that, the way that's being done now, then, then of course they're okay with it. It's 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 in their it, favor. It, it's a convenience for the town. We have to turn around. It never right? was, it never was for 60 years. So but Brian, how I got your concern as a taxpayer, a whole taxpayer of the town. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, it's a convenience factor for the town. We do we do this in numerous other places. No, that's favoritism. No, no, it's not. This is only one of the one of the several favoritism. It's, it's a convenience factor for us. It takes us less time to do that. It saves us money. Um, so I guess you guys look at things differently than I do. But yeah. I know you definitely look at the farm up there differently. That's for sure. Sure. But everybody feels sorry for a farmer, but right. So we have come to the end of our 30 minutes. Um, so we're at 7.53. So we, I believe we've heard out everything that was brought to us by you this evening. So we'll, um, again, uh, we have the work that will get done out on Gilead. I will talk to you. I'll talk to Kinsley. I'll find out when he's starting. I'll talk to Morgan, make sure we get there first. I'll review the letter of agreement with Kinsley that I have. And then... Um, I can ask Morgan about, you know, what if we do we ever did Sean Wright Road pass Brian's? Um, I, I don't know the answers, but I can ask Morgan about ditching um towards the farm because I don't know the answer. So I can ask Morgan. And then we'll go do the work. We'll make sure that you guys are all able to attend or yeah. voice any concerns while the work's being done. Yeah. So and I did talk to I'm gonna email the Bellavance, the ones who won the project near your house and um Morgan's hoping for, you know, late this week, early next week. And he knows, I said, well, we got to get, you know, talk to Brian so that Brian can stake out his entrances and we make sure that they're where, you know, how you like them so that that way it doesn't impact your access to the field. So you had to have permission from landowners before you can put the water on the property. Um, and I'm not sure exactly where the, where the town right away is now since they did the bridge job there. Or where the town right away is anywhere up through there. Yeah, right. I, I uh, think we'd have to look at the layout of the road. But the guy um, is it's a new company we haven't used, but they seem, but the conversation was really good with him. And I told him that he specifically that he'd be working, you know, that he'd be meeting with you because to make sure that the access to your fields work, 
where you um, you know want to be in the way that you want to be. And he said that was no problem. And the town's going to do the grading. He's going to do the berm removal on the other side, and and um, that way it can be crowned and graded and all that. So look nice. That was the elevator you're talking about. Yeah. What's his name? Kyle. Is that his name? I think it's Brock. Brock is the guy I'm dealing with. He works for. Um, I thought I may be the owner, but I work. Yeah, well, I've been dealing with this. I thought it was Kay, Kay Bellamy. <clears throat> so it could be. I've just been dealing with a guy named Brock. So maybe Kyle owns the business, but um, this gentleman was, was great, happy to said, you know, work with you. And he's like, I don't know, whatever you need. So. All right. Well, thank you for coming. Good. Yeah, thanks. thanks for your time. We will um, move towards the bond informational hearings. And like we've done this once before yeah we're gonna do it again so i think <laughs> that so reed i see i think i'm just guessing maybe that's reed osborne who lives on crystal drive um i'm not sure if you do you have any questions reed specifically I, this is Therese. i didn't have any specific questions i was just interested if there was any new information okay great um nope not at this point it's the same project we're going to be voting on australian ballot on Tuesday, April 18th. And um, so no, we should be good to go. We have, I'm going the same night as the bond vote. I actually have an appointment uh, with the development review board to get the permits, uh, zoning permits approved for Crystal Drive pump station, as well as the upgrades to the existing um, well house on Pleasant Street, because since we're the town, we actually can't approve our own zoning permits. So they go to the development review board, but no, so far everything's on target on April 19th. We're gonna have the um, uh, pre-bid um, meeting uh, here at the town hall, I believe. So everything is you know, moving full steam ahead. So we've been advertising it, really encouraging people to vote if they can't come to the polls. We've, you know, there's ways uh, 24 seven that they can request an absentee ballot. So you know, we're, we're going forward and we're in the process is out. It's definitely going to be a two year construction season <laughs> read. So I don't know. Um, I don't know how it's going to be staggered yet. Um, but certainly, um, I don't know that yet, but we can provide that information as we have it. Okay. Do, do you know anything about what the, the nature of the disruption to the water service might be? Actually shouldn't really be probably if anything for you. I mean, barring any, obviously, if something the line breaks and we're doing construction, but you, well, the way we did it last time was we laid the water line and then we, you know, a certain day we connected. So on that day, we might say to you, okay, the your water's going to be off from X to from X period of time to Y, and then we connect and um, and you're up and running. Okay, so sounds good. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't, you know, from my lips to God's ears, it doesn't really impact you much. And um, then obviously the only thing that we'll ask, I know that your mom had told me and you're not alone. There's at least three houses that have um, internal, what's the word I want? You're yeah, basically booster just, pumps. Yeah, yeah, yes. those got to those gotta go. <laughs> okay. Once we're, once we're fully online and um those those have to go, but other than that, um, you guys should be should be all set. Okay, that well, sounds good. I'm sorry about yeah. that. My my booster's a modern marvel. I'll hate to see it go. <laughs> well, let me tell you, you're not the only one because uh, you have one, and I believe there's at least two other yeah, people on on Crystal Drive, which totally makes sense. And um, but no, everything hopefully is is moving on target. The you know the bond vote, you know, I expect it to pass on Tuesday, April 18th. So. Um, if you need a absentee ballot, get a hold of Pam Brown and she'll send you one. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Reed. So, you know, if the information is exactly the same, the ad's been in the paper, um, there's an ad in the paper to encourage people to vote. We've been putting it on Facebook from Porch Forum. We've done email blitzes with basically anybody that we know, I know, Kelly knows, committees know, we were asking people to forward the information and uh, you can get a ballot 24 seven just by calling the town manager's office, leaving your name, address and a phone number and, um, or emailing Pam. So, you know, obviously as it gets closer, you're really gonna have to vote at the polls because with the mail, we're not sure we can get you an absentee ballot up right. for a certain point, but currently, or you stop in and just vote. 
stop it. See Pam cast about. So unless someone has specific questions, um, I think all the information has been out there at nauseum. Sure. Both during the town meeting show for people in favor of it. it. Passed, yeah. Yeah, widely passed. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> passed by a law. It did. Oh, or would okay. have. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely went our favor. So, yeah. I'm. We had 202 voters. I told Chris, yeah, this like, Chris, that I'm like, I want more than 202 people to vote on this project. So yeah, I can't remember now what it was like 170 to yeah. 20 something. Yeah, or something like that. not as overwhelming as the first phase. So it was like we had 350. Like four people vote, and there was three fifty yes and only four no's. <laughs> so, so hopefully we see it turn out. But yep. so that's it. Right. Please vote. Tell your friends, tell your family, everybody vote. <laughs> right. Uh, resolution for a local cannabis control commission. <laughs> yeah, this is what you talked about um, at the last board meeting that you guys were going to become uh, that you were going to be the. Oh, cool. control. So I took this directly from the state of Vermont uh, cannabis board and I uh, just mm -hmm. so unless you see any errors, um, you can make a motion to adopt the resolution and I'll pass around your signatures. <laughs> <laughs> No, more pay. Oh, more comp time. <laughs> you can't afford my comp time. You're going to see comp time. We all don't show up to one of these meetings. I know. You guys got to our comp time. Yeah. You didn't get the memo? Yeah. <laughs> we'll let Orca know so he doesn't come the, set up first. This board, we still have don't have the right to deny someone a some bad character from having a store, right? Mm -hmm. I won't sign we're pretty much just um you're basically looking at the zoning rights we can make i know sure i know i know but I, I have to go with what out that's, I'm sorry. that's fine it's pretty it, it's pretty much like a liquor license right so did you I mean, say it's no. not, we can do we can deny a liquor, liquor license uh no really you'd have a hard time you know it's like if let's say somebody you know is uh, making selling liquor to underage kids and they're like well we're not gonna that's up to the vermont liquor board yeah You'd have a hard time denying someone. You could deny it, but uh, it may end up getting overturned. Mm -hmm. I think so. Anyway, I have to. Decide. And I think in this case, so did you say no? I think in this case, it's just the state just saying no. I I did not, but I, I will. Oh, okay. So the vote. Okay. So he didn't get the vote. Yeah. All right. It was not unanimous. We did. Okay. Not perfect. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. It's sounds with this. All right. Oh, do you want that documented? I don't care. Okay. If you want if we need to, you know, make the numbers go. Yeah, that's fine. No, no, I meant like you know, we um, motion second, all in favor. So you want yours as a nay? Mine's so, a nay. Okay. No, that's fine. No problem. I'll make sure. Just want to make sure, like whatever you want it done. You know, it doesn't really matter the way I understand it. We are. We don't have any control anyway, but. Pretty voicing much. my opinion. Just like everything else from the state, how much, you know, as we said earlier, we're in Dylan's rule state. We get to do exactly what the state tells us to do. Or not. They make us feel good. Like we're part <laughs> of it. We're part of the solution, but we're, it's, it's, we're real. Well, we're not. But if something goes wrong, they'll probably blame it. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. <clears throat> uh, so we have the, we're all good there. Any further discussion on our Sorry, new board moment. adventure? Okay. Oh. Uh, Bethel Historical Society wants to do a coin drop. Probably just want to not approve that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not approving it. I have to. Ooh, tough crap. I, I have to take this call. It's okay. Sure. <laughs> so you guys are looking for May 20th, and usually Pam, or not Pam, sorry. Kelly, Kelly, Kelly takes care of the whole schedule, so I'm assuming that it's all good to go. So yeah. what you're gonna do. Your map. Your map. Oh, yeah, your hand-drawn map. That's the you best one I've ever seen. It actually shows what yeah. you're supposed to do. Yeah. 
So Denise moved that. Anybody can second that? Second that. All in second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, good to go. Sorry, good to wait so long. The map that it it it's good to wait through until we get to this. <laughs> the next thing that uh, opioid, the opioid. I move to authorize town manager to sign those agreements. I, I'm assuming everybody's written, read, read them. Are we okay with that? And the only reason why I say that is sometimes uh, looking through all that, it's like, you know, if you jump on board and you take the settlement or something 20 years from now, it was 10 times worse than well, we say, well, we already paid jobs, you know? You know, is it? Well, the, yeah, I. Is this like a rubber stamp thing that all the talents are doing for the state settlement? And, so I've always been as, hesitant. As, as I read it, yeah. Because yeah. I've always been hesitant. Because whenever somebody wants to call, um, pay you off. Well, there was some you know. someplace with at least one of them. But if we had more information came in at a later point, we're not going to be in a position to administer any of that. Uh, but it does impact how much money is available to the state right. to be administered and it is a crisis and we need to it it's it's a settle it's a law settlement so yeah, yeah i no, think I'm we sure. should do it I, I i'm trying to remember i i read through i don't see where they say that this is um Well, there is a there is a site you can go to to get more information, but I try to remember. I don't remember anything there saying this is it. But don't forget what it, it's it's not for damage done. It's for um, what, what is it? Uh, uh, I'm trying to get the right words. We're still trying to figure out how they're helping response. The doctor is the one that signs the prescription to go get that. Pharmacy. But the pharmacies, they're the ones that have the babies. You know? But it's the main but factor. Because the pharmaceutical industry really pushes their drugs on doctors and hospitals. Here, we're going to give you all these samples. At the end of the day, it's the doctors that administer. They, right? yeah. some, some towns where the pharmacy delivers more prescriptions for this than there are people in the community. The worst mm -hmm. words. Ugh. It's a marketing issue. Yeah, I guess it is. is. <clears throat> you guys are all good with it. We can have a sign on it. So move. Second. Are you all in favor? Aye. 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 Probably just reject that one. <laughs> Hi, Jesse. See if, see if Jesse's sleeping or not. I'm listening. He's away from the fire. <laughs> I heard so, that. <laughs> Babes Bar first and third class liquor license renewals. So, unless anybody has any questions with that, I just need a motion. So, move. Did you approve this? Second. Yep. And the next one. You need to sign it, right? Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 That's you. Here? Yep. So we have a water leak, so I think we're going to take it. We approved you to sign the opiate side. Okay, <laughs> perfect. I think we'll take that bar. tomorrow. And you approve the liquor license as we did. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Did, do we have to sign those out? The liquor license? No, not anymore. Remember, we just get that oh, that's email right. thing, and she has to tell them. Okay. That's it. Anything left on the town manager's report? That, um, uh, so I will tell you when you go, well, not you, when Dave goes home. In Idaho, you're going to see there's a water leak like we talked about. So Richard checked it out. Morgan checked it out. But I don't think we need to dig it tonight. It's more dangerous to dig at night. We'd have Is to it get in the new lights. area? Um, it's, it's, I don't know if that's 
related. I can't mm -hmm. tell you that right now. We'll know more in the morning. So I just told Richard that I think we'd be safer to dig it at like 6 a.m. instead of now getting big lights and all that. And he tried shutting off the um, water to the apartment in a couple places and it's still flowing. I said, you know, David, he thinks it might be a spring, but they're not sure if they can hear it leak. But um, so they'll do it in the morning. He's good. Richard's going to cone it off tonight. I've told him to text Ryan Slack at the state and let Ryan know because he's out and gets calls and also to let BSP know so that they don't call Morgan in all hours of the night and tell us, you know, it's coming up, but it's going down the road and it's getting the road wet, but eventually it's going to make its way over the hill to the drain in front of the wall. So digging it at night is just, it's dangerous. It's been so. doing it every year for years. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, so I don't know what it is. And maybe in the daylight, they'll have a better look. See, yeah, be they could always up. call Aaron. I know. I know. The ghost for about two weeks. I will. Oh, it's Jensen, actually. He could have Aaron Perez check it out. Um, I'll just say, see if Aaron can scope it out in the morning. I think the only thing left on the, uh, the planning commission. Yeah, so um, on Tuesday or Thursday, April 20th at 6.30 is going to be our public hearing for the planning commission. So then after the public hearing, we'll have a regular meeting and decide whether or not we're going to hand it off to you. And then, so at the next meeting, I'll let you know. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing was we had, I did update the grants sheet for you so you could see where we're at <laughs> with that. And um, so that's open right now. We're to kind of let you know we're at, we've got 2.8 million awarded and what our local matches and what the status of those grants are. Um, <laughs> also, let's see, I've lost my train of thought. So the, we talked about how many meetings we were going to have in May. Mm. So I just think with the schedule the way it is, it seems like we are always have plenty to do. So I'm wondering if, because I'm going to be gone, so we're going to skip the... Well, we're going to skip the second meeting. Right? We were going to skip the eight. So I'm wondering if you, and we were going to meet our normal meet, because it's a weird month because it has three Mondays. So we were going to skip the 8th and we're definitely going to meet the 22nd. I was wondering if we, sh if you could meet the 15th, we could do the 15th and the 22nd. I just feel like we're going to, the way things are going, we're going to need two meetings. The project's going out to bid for the water, and, you know, that sort of stuff. It just we got to go up on right road. Yeah, at some point. Yeah. yeah. So because Chris and I still have to meet with the attorneys. Chris and I are meeting. So Chris and I and the town's attorney. And Brian Wright and his attorney are meeting to go, you know, to deal with some of the issues that we've written back and forth about. So, so <clears throat> but the 15th, yeah. Um, yeah, it looks like I'm I'm good both days. If Okay, so the 22nd is our normal. Can you do the 15th, James? Uh, yeah, I can. What I'm wondering is, would it be better <laughs> to do the 15th and 29th? Well, I mean, the 22nd is our normal I mean, schedule. Just, uh, Labor, uh, Memorial Day weekend. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Okay, yes. never mind. I was just thinking that we would still be two weeks apart. Right. Yeah, that's just, right. All right. Yeah. Denise, can you do the 15th? Yep. Lindley? I can make both of those meetings, but I'll be a remote for both. All right, so everybody so. remember that. Lindley, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And that, for if, some reason, we can't. But she's not them. telling us which one she's coming to. She's no, not. I'm not coming to either. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm not coming to either. I will be there for the right road one. I'll be back in town for that, but I'll be remote for the 15th and the 22nd. And I should, I'm in charge of my own schedule this time. So I shouldn't have any evening teaching. Let's hope. So no meeting on the 8th and the 22nd. Yeah. And are, are we definite on the... 29th for the right road, or is that still a no? Up it's in the air? not okay. definite. Cool. So we need to get Chris and I and the town attorney need to meet with Brian and his attorney before the select board before looks that. at before the select board looks at right road. We can look okay. at Gilead Road till you know whatever. Andrew doesn't care. We wouldn't go up, but we can't. We can't deal with the right road till we deal. We'll do that with the attorneys. So Just this let trees know when it's dry enough up there. Yeah. Would you? He'll send it with right. two feet of <laughs> If that's July or August or whatever, it gets there. Yeah. Yes. There's no sense of going up there and slopping in the mud. So that is it. I can't think of anything else at this point. Um, 
So we talked about DRP bid phase two for the water projects is the 19th and just encourage everybody to know we'll vote and we should be good. Okay. So look forward to meeting minutes from the 27th. One correction on the first page, all the way at the bottom. Um, Dave moved, Diane seconded. I think it might've been Denise. Must be. It's, it says <laughs> Diane seconded, but I'm, so I'm assuming okay. we mean De Denise. Oh, that's I will fix it. Uh, yeah, Diane seconded. Look at that. <laughs> My alter ego showed up. What did I say? <laughs> right. Uh, good thing it was only just one. You know, I got a few more tucked in there. Somewhere. Right. Probably somebody called me and I was like, nice catch, Lindley. Yeah, exactly. somebody's got to do it, Paul. That's I'm right. sure Paul already, no. Paul already <laughs> yeah. had it. Oh, I, was, I, I didn't want to congratulate <laughs> myself, so I think it was waiting for somebody yeah, else right. to find it. I'm going to the eye doctor tomorrow, but is there any way you can make that watermark just a little later? Sure. Yeah. I, I, My eyeball. I mean, I had that. Yeah, you can. It's you can it out where it's that's light. Yeah. You can change the opacity of yeah. the watermark. Yeah, I can. Yeah. And I can do it on my end. You, he can't. If but I can. Yeah, but yeah, you and can. I usually do. So I'll make a note. Uh, Layton. Not really complaining a lot. No, <laughs> Layton up the draft. Would reduce the time it takes me to read that. Yeah. No, that's fine. <laughs> Dark on <laughs> Dave's. Yeah, exactly. All right. And make a correction <laughs> to. You should see me try to put an outlet in today. I was in a hole. <laughs> it was as far as I could reach. So that's like the, where I can't see. I got the 632 screw to put through two little holes that are as far away as I can reach. And everybody there learned a lot of new bad words. <laughs> learned it, yeah. I had never heard those together before. Yeah. Yeah, new combo. So, All right. Uh, Mention to approve as amended. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Make other stuff in there was meeting. Ooh, not I, had, bad. <laughs> I had to climb all and, the way back um, to 12 foot the lumber. Financial and then just a little <laughs> notification from it got the, worse. The uh, had to PSB. Go all the way. <laughs> Pretty good. The financials look good, other than you said you had a bunch of diesel invoices. I had, I had a bunch of salt invoices. Or salt, and then uh, did you say you had some diesel stuff or no? Um, we have some coming, yeah. Just the salt. I, yeah. I couldn't have got in this and, and Green Mountain I, Power, that's the letter that we like used this. to anyway, endorse their GM applications. So we're going to that. So. Yes. Could be. Uh, you have a light on the screwdriver. And I had okay. other Any other business to come before the board? Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Okay. Have a good night, everybody.